Kelly Neal, I'm here to tell you about my senior project. Throughout this past semester, I've been volunteering on Work Song Farm in Hawkins, New Hampshire. This is a local organic farm run by Dan and Abby Dixon Kilring. And uh, Abby Dixon is actually Mr. Dixon's uh, sister, so that's how I got connected with the farm. Uh, they have a younger daughter named Maggie, who is about one or two, I believe, and they receive great help from Abby's parents, who work both with babysitting and with other tasks around the farm. Um, my purpose for my presentation here today is to expose you to the benefits of organic farming on our society and also to explain how my experiences on the farm reinforce these benefits and why you should incorporate organic farming into your daily life. But before I begin with organic farming, I want to make sure you understand why conventional farming should not be the preferred me method of agriculture. Conventional farming has a wide variety of risks that, are, does, that does not exist for organic agriculture. This includes pesticide poisoning, harm from long-term pesticide exposure, reduced soil productivity, water and food contamination, increased allergens, and stronger antibiotic resistance. An article by Alicia Sacone in the Psychiatry Advisor Journal talked about a recently published study where Milk was linked to Parkinson's disease, or pesticide in milk was linked to Parkinson's disease. The pesticide came from a Hawaiian pineapple farm that had managed to make its way into the local milk supply. Um, Parkinson's disease affects over 6.3 million people, and it is, there's no cure available. Additionally, a long-term study found that children of farm workers having long-term exposure to pesticides have decreased lung function and are more vulnerable to pulmonary diseases. Organic living, however, results in a healthier being, both emotionally and, spirit and spiritually. When I discussed this with Dan Kilrain in our interview, he talked about his physical and emotional health. He said, definitely eating organic food and nutrients dense food is what we try to do. For one thing, generally people prefer organic food because it tastes better. Usually when something tastes better, it means it's better for us because the flavor comes from the nutrients and minerals in our food. He also went on to talk about his spiritual health, saying, My spiritual health and psychological health has been much improved now versus 10 years ago when I worked in a cubicle all day right out of college. Even during my short time on Mark's Song Farm, my, my health has been benefited. I received great physical exercise from the labor that I did on the farm, as well as free organic fruits and veggies, such as this winter squash here, uh, <laughs> which helped me to eat healthier and be more conscious about what I eat and what I do. Also, a lot of times when I'd go to the farm, I'd be stressed out about homework or, or anything else with school or my job or anything else in my life, and a lot of times I would go and I'd leave feeling refreshed and rejuvenated and so much better, so it really just brightened my day no matter what. When I was researching about the benefits of organic farming on society, I watched a documentary called Locally Abundant. They described today's food consumption as including only 12 main uh, food crops and four animal species. Not only does this reduce biodiversity in our food, but it also results in a nutritionally deficient and high calorie foods. They went on to talk about the risk of antibiotic residuals being assumed to be lower in organically produced meat since the sub-therapeutic application of antibiotics is strictly forbidden and therapeutic use avoided as far as possible and strictly controlled. <clears throat> Dan also discussed um, the soil and how it's important to keep it healthy, why it's so crucial to our environment. He said, generally organic agriculture, I believe, is better mostly for the soil on the earth. Everything we eat and a lot of trees for building materials and other products originates in the soil. So if we're not treating it well, we're not treating ourselves well. I went on to do further research as that intrigued me and looking into the dangers of herbicides and pesticides. And I read about a study where major rivers and streams found that 90% of fish, 100% of surface water samples, and 33% of major aquifers contain one or more pesticides at detectable levels. As a result, the pesticide, contam of the pesticide contamination, our drinking water, is also widely contaminated. Conventional agriculture also requires fuel for a wide variety of things that is not necessary to organic and local agriculture, such as synthetic fertilizers, pesticides, herbicides, processing, packaging, warehousing, refrigeration, and especially transportation. 
In fact, the average male has traveled over 1,500 miles before reaching your plate, meaning that the food has come from all over the place, which is 1,500 miles is like from New Hampshire to Kansas. Local and organic agriculture, however, does not require this fuel for any of that. But perhaps most importantly, organic agriculture depends on the support of a community, and community can gain fantastic advantages from providing the support. <coughs> when I was on Work Song Farm, I experienced this support firsthand in a couple different ways. One way was when I saw that the Hoppington leaf blowers, who were collecting leaves during the fall season, uh, would bring the leaves to the farm in it, just like huge truckloads of piles of decomposing leaves. And I wondered, Dan, why on earth do you need all of these leaves on your farm? And he said that he can generate heat from those leaves and use them in his greenhouse. So not only is it a benefit to the leaf blowers of Hoppington, but it also is a benefit to Dan and his business. Additionally, works on farms and neighbors with Beach Hill Farm, which is I think a lot of you probably know it for their great ice cream and they have the goats in the petting zoo, it's really great. But they work together to share knowledge, materials, supplies, tools, and whatever else you need. I also met two other volunteers on Worksong Farm during my time there. It was a young couple learning about organic farming because they one day hoped to have an organic farm of their own. And they regularly helped out on the farm, giving Dan and Abby a cost free extra set of hands um, whenever they needed it. So community is essential to a healthy, healthy and functioning society. Dan said, we try to do business with people nearby, mainly because it builds relationships with people. We support each other and you never know what opportunities will come of that. If I buy everything from China, someone from China isn't going to come over one day and help me put the plastic on my greenhouse, which is something I actually saw happen. I wasn't there for when they put the plastic on the greenhouse, but one day I was there and it looked like a metal structure on your left, and then I came back and it was covered. And he said that it would have been completely impossible without the help of his community members that came to support him. So as you support farmers around you, they are working to keep the environment healthy because it's in their best interest to do so. It benefits not only you, not only them, but also the future generations. So you may wonder what you can do to strengthen your community ties. Well, you can begin by joining a community sustained agriculture membership, or CSA. Worksong Farm has their own CSA membership opportunity, so if you go to their website, www.worksongfarm.com, you can look at their delicious and affordable CSA options. You can also volunteer your time, spread the word, and or donate money to strengthen your ties to your community. The benefits of organic farming extend to a vast variety of topics, but my time is limited. The ideas I covered are some of the most important advantages, in my opinion. America is facing a nationwide health epidemic. It seems as though we're either struggling with obesity, malnourishment, depression, anxiety, or a mixture of it all. Organic living can clean the body, the mind, and the spirit, and I know it did for me. It gave me a whole new sense of awareness of what I do and what I eat, how I treat my environment and my community. It strengthened my persistence, my spatial thinking, and my social skills. So I'm going to use my newfound knowledge to continue to eat healthier and organically and locally, as well as to continue to volunteer and support my environment and my community whenever I can. I strongly recommend that you follow in my footsteps by learning about organic farming firsthand, as a wide variety of farms are often looking for volunteers on their farm. Before I finish, I'd like to thank the people who made this project possible, and that includes Works on Farm itself, Dan and Abby Dixon Gilray, uh, Mr. Groves, my fantastic mentor, and Ms. Dustin, who made this project possible. So thank you. And any questions? <laughs> Conventional farming, those are like Google images, but most of it was my own pictures, yeah.